Numerical Computation, Chapter Two, Video Number Four. In this video, we will look at a recursive algorithm to compute Newton's divided difference, which are the coefficients in the Newton's form of interpolation polynomial. The recursion is initiated with the following. So given the data set x i and y i, so I write f at x i simply equal to y i, and I go through all the data points. This will be n plus one points, and then I compute the next level. So this f now takes two kind of input variables. So x zero, x one. These are always two neighboring um, points, data points. Okay, so it's computed in this way: f at x one minus f at x zero over x one minus x zero. So remember the definition of f at x one, which is just y one. f at x zero will be just y zero. So this will actually be y one minus y zero over x one minus x zero. So that remind us that this guy actually is a one, right? And well, you can compute others. Say f of x one, x two, um, by following the same setting. So this will give you f x two minus f x one over x two minus x one. And you can go to the next level, which um, the new, the divided difference takes now three data points as its input. So it's x zero, x one, x two. And this is defined in this way. So a way to memorize this form would be: what comes here first on the denominator will be this f by removing the first um, data point. So remove x zero, and then you get x one, x two. Minus the second term here will be removing the last number x two. So you get f of x zero, x one. And note that um, the order here actually doesn't really matter. If I switch x zero with x one, then you switch x one with x zero here, you get a negative sign. But then you switch here as well, and you get a negative sign. So in the end, it's the same value. Okay. Similarly, you could compute the quantity f, not taking three. Let's say x one, x two, and x three, in a totally similar way. So this number here will be the Newton divided difference of this, but removing the first one, x one. So it's x three and x two, and the number here will be the divided difference by removing the last one. So it will be of x two and x one, and then this is divided by. The largest, the rightest index x three here, minus the first one x one here. Okay, so the same thing happened here. I forgot to say that the denominator here will be the last one x two minus the first one x zero. And you can see that this procedure can、um, repeat itself. And as many times as your data allows you to do, and namely n times. And we can look at next the general step. So for the general step, where you have k plus one of such、um, x sent in as the independent variable for f, and this is computed、um, by this recursive form. That is, you first remove the x zero, and this will be the term here on the denominator. It will be x one, x two, all the way to x k. And then you remove the last number here, x k. So it will be f of x zero, x one to x k minus one. That's the numerator, and the denominator will be the last x k minus the first, which is x zero. So we might have noticed already that this level here, f at x zero, actually gives me a zero. And at this level here, the first number here, f of x zero, x one, this guy is actually a one. 
and also at the second level, the first value we computed, this is actually exactly a 2. So once you have computed all these di divided difference, and then you can use the first values here, and these will exactly be the coefficients in the Newton's form of the interpolation polynomial. So a0 will be f x0, a1 will be f at x0, x1, and so on and so forth, and ak will be f at x0, x1, and all the way to xk. So pay attention, these are all those divided difference starting from x0, the first one. Now let's look at a, a tabular form of uh, computing all these divided differences. So these divided differences, we can set up a table to compute them. So the first column will be just setting up the data points, say x0, x1, x2, and all the way down, the last one is xn. So once um, these are done, and then and you initiate your iteration by setting in the first column, these are the f at xi's, where they are exactly the, the yi value. So this column basically just y0, y1, y2, and all the way to yn. And now we also notice that um, each level you go in the divided difference, say when you pick up an additional x in here, so instead of 1, it takes 2 x's, and then it will use the information from two numbers in the previous level. So say you have n plus 1 elements here, and using the neighboring 2 to produce 1 for the next column, and in this column, you will have one less, so you have n. And then the next column, you have one less, and then so on so forth, until after you perform nth column, and then you will end up with one number. Okay, so it's kind of a triangular form of data, so you can make a decision of how you want to store them. And in a MATLAB, usually you would declare a matrix to store all these Fs. So you have to decide if you want to use the lower half of the triangle form of the matrix to store the data, or you would prefer to use a upper half triangle shape to store the data. Either way is fine, but you have to decide which way you use. And once you decide it, and your algorithm will have to be designed correspondingly. So for us, for this computation, I will be using a lower triangle shape to store data, which means the upper triangle part here in my matrix will just be zeros. Now let's look at how the next column can be computed. So the next column will contain the divided difference that has two data points as its input. So f of x0 and x1, how can that be computed? Well, that's computed by using the data from the previous column, two of them, right? So it's exactly this form, f of x1. So this value goes here, minus that value goes here, and divided by the difference between the x, x1 minus x0. And similarly, the next value here in f x1 x2 is computed by taking the information from the two neighboring one in the previous column in a totally similar way. So that will be equal to basically y2, which comes here, minus y1, which comes here, divided by x2 minus x1, which is down here. And you can continue and fill this column. And remember, this column will have one element less than the previous one. Once you have done that, you can go on to fill the third column. So these will be the divided difference that takes three of these axes in. And they can be computed by using information from the previous column exactly in the same way. So to compute this guy, I need the previous value of this, fx0, x1, and fx1, x2. So this is computed as this value 
minus that value divided by x2 minus x0. And so on and so forth, and you can fill this column as well. And you can keep filling up all the columns until at the end that you have only two neighboring numbers which would produce one last number in your matrix and then the procedure stops. And once you have gotten this table, then you look at it and you see that actually only some numbers are needed to form the coefficients of the Newton's form of a polynomial. So what will be those numbers? We see that by the way we set up the data, by using a lower triangle shape of a matrix, we see that only the diagonal elements are now useful. So we see this one is actually a zero, and then this one will be a one, and then this one will be a two, and so on and so forth, and then the last one here will be a n. Okay, so you have to extract those informations from the matrix that you set up to store all these divided differences. And then once you have the AIs, and then you can write out the Newton's polynomial.